Hey everyone, I am Michael A. Grimm, a.k.a. Multi-Voice Reviewer. I have many voices, but one opinion. And today, this is where I'm going to wrap up uh, Marvel-thon, but I'll probably come back for more, but uh, right now I decided to do some final thoughts about the uh, Marvel's uh, Phase 4 and uh, Phase 5. One thing I heard for sure, I mean, I know some of you are going to be asking me, um... Are you going to be asking me, uh, am I going to be reviewing, um, Big Hero 6? <laughs> Not a chance in hell. I'm sorry, folks. But like I said on, uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet Review, um, Big Hero 6, I don't like it. I saw some of the clips and everything, and I just don't like it. And besides, in the comic books, there were a group of mutants in Japan. I mean, heck, you have a character who wears a yokai suit, and now he has all the powers and ability like a yokai. But that's not in the comics. In the comics, he transforms into a yokai and have the powers and abilities. And, I mean, I know it's because Disney couldn't use uh, the word mutant in the MCU because they couldn't get the rights to, uh, they couldn't get the rights for the X-Men. But now Marvel made a deal with uh, 20th Century Fox, and now, now they can use it. And who'd have thought that they were planning to do a movie of the Inhumans? But instead do a TV show, which it didn't go well. People were, I mean, the MCU were trying to use the Inhumans to replace the mutants for the X-Men and replace the X-Men. But here's the biggest thing. One thing I know about the Inhumans, they are a race of human beings who were experimented by the Kree. They were using them as a weapon, but the Kree abandoned them, so now the Inhumans have to um, live somewhere again, away from us because they have no interest with us. They're a royal family with superpowers. But one thing about the mutants and the Inhumans, the mutants are born are born with superpowers they cannot control. While the Inhumans, on the other hand, they're born with superpowers that they can control. It's up to them if they want to use their powers or not. And some of the Inhumans became members of the Fantastic Four in the comics. And that's why it failed miserably, because people just weren't ready for the... Uh, for the Inhumans, they're not exactly the main focus. Heck, even in the comic books, they made them as side characters. They never, they never made them become a full-fledged character. I mean, they were just a royal family, led by uh, Black Bolt, who cannot speak any words. I mean, if he says a single word, even a whisper, he can destroy everything around him. Heck, one time when he whispered, he created a huge earthquake. It pretty much destroyed a village. And, of course, his wife, Medusa, who has the ability to control her long red hair. Now, of course, I don't want to bore you with the rest of the characters, but that's what I have to say to you folks. Anyway, let's get on with the list, shall we? Since I got a little list, I got a little list. A society of fenders would be well beyond the ground and never would be miss. They never would be miss. <laughs> One thing I did saw a trailer of is this. That they're going to make... That they're going to make... Black Widow the movie and Scarlett Johansson... I mean, I know Scarlett Johansson sacrificed herself on the Endgame. Spoilers. But, um... This takes place before... This takes place, um... Before... Before the uh, the event with the Eternity War. And on this uh, story, they introduce other characters who were part of the MCU. Like, they're going to introduce uh, Yelna Belova as the new um, Black Widow who's going to be replacing Scarlett Johansson. And she also reunites with her uh, old flame. An old flame of Natasha Romanoff. Red Guardian, who's like uh, a Russian version of Captain America. And they're all teaming up together to deal with... They were going to be dealing against Taskmaster. Right where my thumb is. That Taskmaster? Master? 
But one thing I know about Taskmaster is that he's a mercenary, and he has a unique ability. He can mimic and copy everyone's ability. So, like, um, I have my own martial arts skills, and, I, and I'm good with the sword. But if I met Taskmaster, he'll be copying my moves. And I had to find a way to defeat him in another way. But anyway, back on the list. Now, I did, I I should have been mentioning other shows, but, um, oh, what the hell. I mean, I did mention um, Agent Carter as a spinoff to Captain America. But one thing I did not mention is the one from Netflix that now they are canceled because Disney Plus want to make their, want to make their own. But I remember uh, Daredevil, Power Man, which is also Luke Cage. Iron Fist, and of course, Jessica Jones. A girl with superpowers who doesn't want to wear a costume, but works as a private investigator, while um, while David Tennant is playing the Purple Man. The Purple Man is this bad guy who has a unique ability of controlling people with his mind. So if you try to kill him, he'll stare at your eyes and tell you to shoot yourself in the head, and you'll do it. Hmm. And, of course, also another spinoff, The Punisher, which sadly was short-lived, along with all the other, uh, sadly it got canceled along with all the other um, Netflix Marvel series, because of Disney Plus wanted to own them so they can be shown on Disney Plus since they're creating their own website channel. I also hear that Disney Plus is also, can is also canceling a couple of Disney anime, like um, Disney XD. How about that? Stupid. Now, another show I'm also hearing that Disney Plus is going to be doing, I heard they're going to be doing Falcon and Winter Soldier. They're going to pick up where Captain America left off in the uh, in the end games. One thing I remember on the end games is this. Captain America left in the past. I mean, he uh, he stayed in the past to, to live happily with uh, with Peggy Carter. And then while he showed up as an old man, he gave his uh, Captain America shield to Falcon. So now Falcon is going to be the next Captain America. And Bucky Barnes, <laughs> still a second banana to him. <laughs> but the next one I'm hearing that I am looking forward to see is this. Sadly, my old edition of Encyclopedia Marvel only show a few pictures here, but the Eternals. They're going, to, they're going to do the Eternals. Now, I'm uh, looking forward to see this because one thing I know about the Eternals, they are a group of uh, godlike uh, beings who are immortal. And um, a lot of people do say that's where Thanos came from. Thanos himself was the Eternal. But now since Thanos is gone, the Eternal are now coming to Earth. And now they decided to protect Earth with their godlike abilities. And I also heard that um, that uh, Selma Hayek and Angelina Jolie is in it. Two of my favorite actresses that I always have the hots for. I mean, Selma Hayek, Ike Garamba, and Angelina Jolie. Wow. Of course, among other actors, of course. <laughs> and of course, there's a TV series they're going to be doing, and it's, of course, WandaVision. Where my favorite female superhero, I forgot I put it somewhere else. Anyway, my favorite character, Scarlet Witch, after the end games, she still is not over the death of uh, Vision during the Eternity War. So now she keeps on creating alternate worlds where she can live happily with Vision. And some of them is going to be uh, switching in between, between, um, between, like, a I Love Lucy-like universe to a modern family sitcom universe. And then after that, after that, I also heard that there is also, ah, Shang-Chi and the, Le the Legend of the Nine Rings. Now, one thing I know about this one is this. Now, one thing I also looked up that uh, Shang-Chi here, one thing I know about him is that um, that um, in the comics he was the father of um, he was the father of Fu Manchu. Now, 
thank goodness uh, the MCU decided not to use Fu Manchu because in today Asian society, most people kind of find Fu Manchu very insulting. Although there's a lot of characters that are based from Fu Manchu, like uh, Ra's al Ghul and um, Ming the Merciless from Flash Gordon, Lo Pan from uh, Big Trouble Little China, and also the Mandarin. Which they're going to use in the Shang-Chi movie. In the Shang-Chi movie, um, he's going to be the father of the real Mandarin. And not the Bing Kingsley character that they used in that third uh, Iron Man movie. Which I got to say it was a huge middle finger to the, um, to the diehard fans of the Iron Man franchise. I mean, having Bing Kingsley as a washed up has-been actor pretending to be the Mandarin. I mean, that was just stupid. And of course, one thing I know for sure, Shang-Chi is, he's the first Kung Fu character who is ba who is inspired by Bruce Lee, my favorite action Kung Fu star. And um, he's going to be the first Asian Marvel superhero character. I just hope they're not going to whitewash him or anything. And I also heard that, um, that um, Mordo is going to be in the movie as well. Former sorcerer who's now becoming evil in the first movie. Does that mean that the that after the Shang Chi movie they're gonna they're gonna do like a huge crossover Asian superhero group of Agent of Atlas where he meets uh, Jimmy Woo from uh, Ant Man, Ant Man Two actually. Who knows? I mean, I'm hoping that would happen. I mean, I, I would be on board if somebody... To, I would be on board if they had the... Um, if they had the the Agent of Atlas as a spinoff to Shang-Chi. This time, stick with the actual comic book legend of the Mandarin because he's a... He's a mad scientist who found a crash alien ship and used alien technology as his power by all these nine... All these rings in his fingers. Created by those aliens. Oh yeah, and I'm also help, hoping that uh, there also should meet uh, also... Well, he's not in this book, damn it. But I'm hoping that they should uh, meet uh, Fing Fang Fu. Fing Fang Fu, he's... Um, Fing Fang Fu, he's a... Um, he's a dragon-like alien. He's like a Chinese dragon who landed on Earth and started a rampage. And that was one thing I knew in the Marvel comics. But anyway, moving right along, they're also going to be doing the TV series of Loki. Even though we saw in the Infinity War that Thanos just snapped Loki's neck, but now they're hinting that that was a fake death because on the uh, end games, on the end games where it takes place on the Avengers 1, Loki took the Tesseract and teleported himself out of here. So there might be a TV series of Loki, but we don't know if he's going to be playing... Is this a Loki who's going to be the villain, or Loki who's going to be legit? Who knows? And then, the one I've been waiting for is this. The sequel to Doctor Strange, my favorite uh, Sorcerer Supreme. I heard that they're going to be doing a sequel called uh, Doctor Strange Into the Multiverse of Madness. And from the looks of the title, it looks like something out of an H.P. Lovecraft. And I also heard that uh, Wanda, a.k.a. Scarlet Witch, is going to be in it. She's still not coping over the death of Vision, so it's up to Doctor Strange to help her snap out of it and move on. And also, the bad guy they're going to be dealing with is this. They're going to be battling against Nightmare. And that's Nightmare right there. And one thing I know about Nightmare is that uh, he's like Freddy Krueger, but in a Marvel Universe kind of way. He doesn't use uh, those uh, knife gloves, but he does torture people in their nightmares. And I bet they're going to make him more Lovecraftian. I think that'll be that's the whole point of the whole story in that sequel which I'm going to be so stoked to watch. I mean, when it comes out on DVD or Blu-ray and watch it myself, I'm going to love it. It might be a little scary, but I'm going to enjoy it. 
Anyway, coming up is the TV series that I'm also interested in is this. Marvel's What If. Now, you hear me talk, I mean, I got the message of uh, J. Jonah Jameson thinking that they should do the What If J. Jonah Jameson was bitten by a radioactive spider. And, of course, Nick Fury talking about What If Captain America becomes Nick Fury. But there's a lot of What Ifs thing, like uh, Peggy Carter becomes Captain Britain and, uh, and Steve Rogers become Iron Man. And, of course, there's also another What If if T'Challa was Star-Lord. Black Panther becomes Star-Lord? Huh. Becomes a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy? Heh. <laughs> That'll be interesting. And uh, one thing I also heard that they're going to be doing Spider-Man 2. And I also heard that they're going to be having that Netflix character, Daredevil. That's right. The actor who played Daredevil in the Netflix series, he's going to surprise his role on Spider-Man 2, except this time he's going to be he's going to be defending Spider-Man, proving that he was innocent during the um during the Mysterio incursion. And also another thing I also hear that uh, one thing is going to be part of the canon of the uh of uh, Spider-Man MCU is that they're going to have Morbius, the living vampire, be canon. And I also heard that they're also they're going to be doing Venom two. Venom two, he's going to be dealing with uh, with uh, Carnage. And one thing I think they should have done is have Spider-Man involved, so so it could be based more to this comic book I have, Maximum Carnage. Oh, yeah, and I also forgot to mention, I have a Nintendo 64 version of this game. Even though I hate Spider-Man, but I do like the symbiote stories. And that's my thing. In Venom, it was an alright movie. I'll give you that. Well, thank God they're not sticking with this uh, crumbled up uh, picture I printed out. Spider-Man One More Day, where he deals with Mephisto and forgets everything about Mary Jane. Actually, J. Jonah Jameson has a great idea. Get the hell out of here! But also, one thing i also been thinking. I mean, speaking of Morbius, the living vampire, I also heard that they're planning to do their version of Blade. And one thing I had to say... After the third Blade movie, where now their vampire is Dracula, except they don't call him Dracula, they call him Drake. I mean, the movie was entertaining, but I, I, can, see, I can see some of the actors not feeling the movie. But if they're going to make this Blade movie, does that mean they're going to have Dracula? No, not this Dracula. This is Bram Stoker Dracula on... Uh, on uh, Deadpool uh, Killatures, where Deadpool went to all the literal, literate book characters and he killed Dracula himself. I'm talking about Marvel version, Marvel Universe of Dracula, but more, but more modern looking. Hmm. If they're gonna do a Blade movie and have Dracula in the Marvel MCU, I don't know. Hey, Dracula, what do you think? Good evening, I am back. Hang on. Hmm. Me, Count Dracula, in the MCU. One thing I will say, it would have Universal have a one for their money. Since Universal are not doing too good on their dark universe. Hey, at least I uh, kicked your butt and won the heart of a uh, succubus uh, bride in, Dracula, in Deadpool Dracula's Gauntlet comic. They should do a movie based on that. Piss off, Deadpool. I'm out of here. Hey, Deadpool, what are you doing here? Oh, yeah? Well, you almost forgot to mention about me. And, of course, 
that now I am now part of Disney. And Mickey said not a chance in hell. <laughs> Shove it, Deadpool. And let me do my job. Okay, a little update to you folks. Ever since... Ever since... Um, the first Deadpool movie, and I also saw Deadpool 2, which was a really awesome sequel. Who would have thought that, um, that Josh Brolin, who played Thanos, is now playing Cable in this? Hmm. Yeah, hmm. This one, Deadpool uh, meets uh, Succubus, and he marries her in the comic. So much for uh, Lady Death. It would have been awesome if I was in the Infinity War. Come on, Deadpool. If Thanos beat you, he I mean, if Thanos was there, he would have kicked your butt. And besides, the only time you uh, defeated Thanos was in Deadpool versus Thanos when they're fighting over Lady Death. And of course, it showed why Deadpool can't die is because Thanos did a curse on him where he'll never stay dead. He'll keep healing up and won't stay dead. So he will be with uh, Lady Death in the comics. By that finger-snapping scrotum chin. Oh well, at least I'm part of MCU on Phase 5. A lot of rumors saying that they're going to be doing a Deadpool MCU movie. And, well, don't know much of the details yet, but as soon as I get enough details from Hollywood, I'll let you know. And one thing I cannot believe is this. What's that, Deadpool? That the MCU have the rights for the, doing their own X-Men movie, and Hugh Jackman is returning to play Wolverine again. Yeah, that's right. Huh, would have thunk it. I did heard that um, Hugh Jackman himself is returning to play Wolverine in the uh, MCU version of the X-Men, which that's going to happen in Phase 4. Huh. And one thing I do have a problem with, at least they can make the Storm character a lot better. Because I remember in the first movie, the director of the first X-Men movie, Holly Berry here, who's playing Storm, in the comic books, Holly Berry was the most awesome, kick-ass character in the, uh, the X-Men franchise. But the problem was, to the director, he hated Storm and made her into a useless character and then killed her off in Day Future Pass. which. Which that pretty much upset a lot of uh, X-Men fans. I just hope that the MCU makes Storm a whole lot better and more kick-ass. But back to the list, shall we? Oh, and another thing I also heard. Um, there is also another Thor movie. This time they're going to do a fourth Thor movie. Except this time, this time it's going to be involving Natalie Portman. The lovely and sexy Natalie Portman. She's playing the love interest, Jane, from all these three Thor movies. Well, now, in, they're going to take it from the comic books where Jane, she starts having cancer. And Mjolnir chose her to be the next Thor since Thor quit being the God of Thunder. So now, she's going to be using Mjolnir and have Thor's powers... And um, every time when she uses the that uses Milnir, her cancer goes away. But when she um, stops becoming Thor, her cancer will come back. That's a lot worse than you, Deadpool. I'll bite my tu tumor covering ass. No, thank you. But anyway, back in the thing. And there's also a TV series of uh, Hawkeye where Kent, right now it's not evolving, uh, I mean, this is not like a solo series of uh, Kent, a.k.a. Uh, Hawkeye. It's going to be focusing more on his daughter, which he was practice, which he was training her how to use an arrow, so she might be the next Hawkeye. And of course, there's a rumor talking about that they're going to do a, a Dark Avenger where all the villains starts uh, masquerading themselves as the Avenger and starts taking all the fame. Or they're going to be doing a um, Avengers Secret Invasion where now all the que where all the scrolls are uh, disguising themselves as the Avengers. Hmm. Does that mean they're going to be having Super Scroll? 
for those of you who don't know, he was a main bad guy for the Fantastic Four, and one thing that's pretty cool about Super Scroll is that this scroll was experimented by the scrolls themselves, by the scroll empire, and he has all the powers and ability just like the Fantastic Four. He could be super strong like the thing, indestructible. He could be covered in flame and fly around. He can create a force field, go invisible, and also start stretching like Mr. Fantastic. That's one character of the scroll that uh, some of the people should be dealing with. Oh yeah, and speaking of Fantastic Four, here we go to Phase 4. Now, I also heard that they're going to be doing, that they're going to be having a third volume of the Guardians of the Galaxy, which I am so stoked to look forward to seeing. And one thing I also heard that they're going to be having, they're going to be having Adam Warlock. Now, I don't know if he's going to he's going to start out as a bad guy and then discovered that I mean, discovered that the Guardians are good guys and he becomes a member. But I'm hoping for that. And this is Adam Warlock right here. And he's the same alien species where those aliens that uh, Rocket Raccoon called them the considered douchebags, which Rocket is right. They are considered douchebags. Because they always think they're so perfect. But anyway, one thing I hope they should do is this. They should do a TV series of the Ravagers. I mean, do a prequel story of the Guardians of the Galaxy where it's not focusing on Star-Lord or any other characters, but focusing on the original Guardians of the, the, original Guardians of the Galaxy themselves, which is the Ravagers. I mean, if you paid attention in this in volume on volume two, Fester Stallone, he was the leader of the Ravagers, and he was a character in the comic books. He was a Guardian of the Galaxy, along with all the other characters, even Yondu. I mean, you remember at the end where uh, where Fester Stallone says, "You know, after Yondu's death, who'd have thought it would bring us all together once again for Yondu's uh, honor." How about we go on another heist one more time? I'm in. Dope. I miss you guys so much! Hell yeah. Now, let's go steal some shit. <laughs> one thing I think they should do is they should do a TV... I mean, Disney Plus should do a series where it's the... Where it's an origin of the original Guardians of the Galaxy called the Ravagers. And maybe you should call it the Ravagers, the original Guardians. That would be pretty interesting, and I'll be very stoked to uh, see it. Well, I don't have Disney Plus, but but it would be pretty interesting if they uh, go along with that idea. Now, I also heard that they're going to be doing a um, Ant Man three, where now Ant Man is helping Hank Pym and Jane with the help of Hope. And they're going to be introducing another character who might be a villain or something. Don't know much details. But one thing I have heard is that they're going to be doing um, the Fantastic Four, and um, this time they're going to have Emily Blunt as uh, Invisible Girl and her real-life husband that... Um, well, his name escapes me, but I know that he was in the office. He played Jim. The one who always do this. And always tease uh, Dwight Schrute. Oh, and speaking of, um, speaking of Fantastic Four, at least they didn't make it stupid like the one with um, Jessica Alba as, um, as Invisible Girl. Or... Um, as lame as fan four stick. I mean, that was a that was a huge disaster. But one thing I would have to admit, I seen the um, the Roger Corman's uh, version of the gar of the uh, Fantastic Four. I liked it. The movie was good. I mean, it wasn't as bad as the Jessica Alba or the fan four stick. This movie turned out to be way more decent than the other Fantastic Four movies. Sadly, it was made in the 80s, and it was created by Roger Corman, who is a, a cheapskate director, but a damn, but a damn good one is, as well. 
Anyway, another thing I also heard that they're going to be planning to do, um, going to be doing, uh, Avengers Secret War, which that was a huge event comic, and a huge event comic, which they're going to be doing a movie of, which is kind of hard to make without, uh, Iron Man or Captain America or even Black Widow. Well, and of course they're doing their version of the X-Men, which that's a good thing. Deadpool 3. Captain Marvel 2, which I would uh, be interested on seeing. I bet it would be really good that Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Carol Danvers, is going to be helping the Skrulls find a new home. And, of course, uh, there's going to be a uh, Black Panther 2, which that's going to be awesome. I mean, Wakanda forever! <laughs> now, here's another superhero that I haven't talked about. They're going to be doing the movie of Nova. They're going to be doing Nova. Now, one thing I know about him is he's like the Hal Jordan of the Marvel Nova Corps, since the Nova Corps are like the Green Lantern of the Marvel Universe. I mean, I guess it kind of takes place after um, after Thanos got the Power Stone at uh, at Xandar, and uh, probably some of the people at Xandar m probably must have been dead by uh, by Thanos himself. So they had to choose one person who would be able to bring justice throughout the galaxy. So they're going to have this one kid who's going to be the real Nova hero for the Nova Corps. And also, and I think he should be a tie-in for the Guardians of the Galaxy. Since the, uh, since the Guardians of the Galaxy got involved with the Nova Corps in the first movie, I figured, what the hell. Have this Nova character be a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Maybe appear on Volume 3. And then have Nova Corps be a be sort of a spinoff. Oh yeah, this one I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward that they're going to be doing the Silver Surfer movie. About damn time. I mean, I've been waiting for them to do Silver Surfer because the Silver Surfer is one of my favorite cosmic superheroes. One thing you should know about me on Marvel. Marvel comic books. I'm more interested in cosmic, cosmic characters. I like outer space characters. Ever since I saw the Guardians of the Galaxy, and um, Silver Surfer is one of my favorites. And it's about damn time that they're going to do the movie. I just hope this one's going to tie in with the, um, with the, um, with the Guardians. Now here is one superhero I never tackled because. Oh, one more thing I also heard. They're also planning to do a Ghost Rider. Now, I remember the the Nicolas Cage movie of Ghost Rider. Come on! It was awesome! Yeah! I mean, I'm a guy who made a deal with the devil, and then he killed my father, and now I'm going out hunting demons. Come on! <laughs> I always like the Pendant Stare one. I mean, you, your soul is stained by the blood of the innocent. Look into my eyes. Now, I saw, I also saw the review of uh, Ghost Rider 2. The movie was terrible. The movie sucked. I mean, it really sucked. So, if they're going to be doing another Ghost Rider, is it going to be a tie-in to the uh, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. series? Because there was a Ghost Rider character who showed up in the Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. He's not the Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. He's a Hispanic guy who is possessed by another ghost who is a spirit of vengeance. Or, or they're going to be sticking with the latest Ghost Rider, the Cosmic Ghost Rider. Now... One thing I know about the Cosmic Ghost Rider, this is from an alternate world where Thanos slaughtered everybody on Earth, and all that's left is Frank Castle, a.k.a. the Punisher. And uh, he met Mephisto, and he made a deal with Mephisto to take vengeance against Thanos. But sadly, he's stuck on Earth. He cannot go anywhere until uh, Galactus shows up. And he gave him cosmic powers and become the cosmic ghost rider. So now he can go right around into space 
finding Thanos. Now, in the comic books, at first he tried to kill him, but he decided to go back into the past and meet young Thanos and try to teach him that killing is wrong, but that went t terribly wrong and become like a Punisher version of Thanos. Which, that's a nightmare. So now, in the final, final issue, the Cosmic Ghost Rider now decided to go one-on-one -on, -one on Thanos and destroy him this time. So, who knows? I mean, Thanos is already gone, so he's gotta be, there's gotta be another Cosmic bad guy to deal with. Now, here's a character that I never talk much of because I never did find him as an interesting character. Now, he's been around longer than, um, longer than Captain America. Oh, and a little known fact. If you ever watch, um, Captain America, the first Avenger, there was a red and yellow costume which was owned to the original Human Torch before Johnny Blaze. And he goes by the name of Professor Finnis T. Harton, which this is the first uh, Human Torch right there. And he's supposed to be like an android who is a superhero. And, um... And you see the, uh, the the original Human Torch costume in Captain America, the first Avenger. But the other character I'm going to be talking about who is older than Captain America is this. Namor, the Submariner. Now, he's been around since World War II. He was the king of Atlantis, but doesn't want to get involved in the outside world. He's like a human... He's like a, a human sea-like character who's the king of Atlantis. And of course, in the later comics, they're saying that he's also the very first mutant who ever lived before Magneto and Professor X. And um, he's sort of an anti-hero, so he doesn't really care about Earth. All he ever cares about is his city, Atlantis. And that's about it. But, he, um, but um, after he helped Captain America during World War II... In the later comics, Johnny Storm found him. He was disguised him. He he just grew a beard and became homeless until he finally showed him and showed him Atlantis. And um, and he also and also he also uh, puts the moves in Invisible Girl because he finds Invisible Girl attractive, and it's making uh, and it's pissing uh, Mister Fantastic off real bad. So I don't know if uh, if Namor is gonna is gonna um, go well or not because uh, it's just like the Inhumans. He's not exactly all that interesting of a character. So I don't know if they're gonna make him interesting or not. I mean, Aquaman became a huge success, but that's Aquaman. He's an awesome character. Namor, he's not all that great. So I don't know if the Submariner would would fly since he has wings on his ankles that makes him fly <laughs> but who knows hey mickey mouse what are you doing here ha huh? hey michael well stanley was right about one thing he said it does take one man to make a difference. Enough said. Ha. Huh. So stay tuned, and I hope you're psyched to see all those other Marvel superheroes. Bye-bye. Ha. -bye. Huh. Thank you, Mr. Mouse. Sadly, I'm not a member of the Mickey Mouse Club. You know, I'm getting pretty tired of the Marvel stuff. I mean, I reviewed all... I reviewed all of... Uh, Phase 1, 2, and 3 from this DVD collection I got. But uh, if any of these Marvel superheroes showed up in the blockbusters, I'll probably get them on DVD and probably watch them and maybe do a sequel to my uh, Marvel Thon. But right now, this is the end of Marvel Thon. For those of you who likes this, please leave a... who enjoyed my uh, Phase 4 thoughts about, um, about Marvel Phase 4 and such, 
please leave a comment down below, hit like, and subscribe. As for me, I'm interested in another superhero universe. The Arrowverse. Who'd have thought that it all started with the series Arrow? Which, if you ask me, I like uh, Legend of Tomorrow because it's like, what if Doctor Who is in the DC universe? And uh, I'm also getting into uh, the other shows like the uh, the Flash and uh, Supergirl. Hmm. There really was a show called The Flash before this. But the actress who played Supergirl in the Arrowverse, she's she is something. I like her. She is pretty. She is hot. And she is really a really good character. And I love the romance between Brainy and Nia Null. And I know that Nia Null is transgender, but I don't care. The romance is pretty touchy. So, um, from the words of the late, great uh, Stan Lee, Excelsior! <laughs>